assisted living and today on the golden pan we're going to make potato gnocchis. Have you ever made them Marsha? Never. Well I'm going to show you how to do it. Oh great. So let's get started. The first thing I did was boil the potatoes. You can also bake them in the oven and how you do that Marsha is you take the potatoes you put some holes in them, you wrap them in foil with salt on them. Well, you salt them and then you wrap them in foil and then you bake them in the oven until they're nice and tender. You can do it that way, but I prefer to boil them. So that's what I did. Oh, so we're gonna peel okay. them. Here we go. If I can do it, you can do it. So here are the potatoes, they've been boiled. They might be a little warm. I'm gonna dump some of the water out. It's easier to peel them once they've been boiled. Mm -hmm. Have you ever peeled potatoes before they've been boiled? It's a little harder. Yes. So the skin is going to come right off. All right, Marsha, they might be a little, a little warm still. You want to use a potato peeler or do you want to use a knife? All right. So we're just going to put the peelings on a plate. First thing you do is peel them and the, the peels come off so easy. See how easy the skins come right off? You know, this is, I made these one time before and the first time they didn't come out as good because they didn't add enough flour. So one of the tricks. You can peel it off. Yeah, you could. You don't even need a peeler. You could just peel it off. One of the tricks is making sure you add enough flour because it should be doughy. You don't want them to taste like, um, like potatoes, mm -hmm. right? I guess so. Even though they're potato gnocchis, <laughs> they got to taste like a pasta. So my friend Reno wasn't able to help us today, but I brought him a sample last night and he said that they came out perfect. So I did it right. Oh, good. <laughs> Hi Mona. Hi. Hi. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. Where is everybody? So our potatoes are all peeled, Marsha. Mm -hmm. And the next step is we're going to mash them in a bowl. We're going to mm -hmm. mash them. So do you want to take that fork and just start mashing them? Yeah. Mash them real good. What's your favorite thing to cook, Marsha? Uh, I don't know. Well, it depends on what the kids wanted years well, ago. What did they uh, like? What was their favorite dish that you uh, made them? Really, junk food. Junk food. Junk food in a, <laughs> junk food food in a can. can. Uh, speak like spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah. Uh, things like that. So Our next time you see, beans. next time you see them, you can say, "Guess what, kids? I made potato gnocchis from scratch, and they came out delicious. They probably eat better now that they're grown up, right? Oh, yeah, health food." I have a daughter in the medical field. So she eat healthy. Yep, I eat healthy. I'm sure she'd approve of this recipe. This is healthy. There we go. Good job. Got it mashed up. Quite easy. And with Parkinson, you can do the job. Now, do you know the trick to boiling potatoes? So if you really want these to be really whipped, you can put them in the, um, in the KitchenAid with the, whip, with the um, whipping attachment, but I figured it would be fun to just mash them. It's like once you work in your hands, you know? I know, it's Especially, easy. Especially, you know, when you have arthritis as you get older, it's good. A little bit of pockets in either. It yeah. works. Yeah. You want to you keep using your hands. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All that right. Worked. So the next step, we're going to crack a couple eggs. Okay. I'll get those to you, Marsha. I'm going to get a bowl for you to crack them in. So we're going to we're going to crack them in this bowl, and then we're going to. Oh, here's our friend Pat. He's going to help us with this recipe today. Okay, I like your shirt. It's gravy, not sauce. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Hallian say that. What do you say? It's gravy. It's gravy, absolutely. Huh. All right, well we have some gravy for our potato gnocchis. Okay. We're actually on, on the step where we 
Okay. Add the eggs. Now, some recipes um, say to just put the, the yolks in. Do you? No, I always put the whole egg in. I always in. put the whole egg in. Give it a little bob. So you just want to whip them up like that, really easy. Add them to the potatoes. Right. And go ahead, Marsh, you can mix that up. Mm -hmm. I used to have a ricer too, which is much easier. A ricer? Because I need a ricer. Oh. You put potatoes in there. Oh, that's a it holds all around it. And you press it and they come out like little strings. Oh, cool. And they were much easier to do. That's different, huh? I think every Italian family had one. Not mine. Italian. Not mine. Oh. <laughs> no? <laughs> Not that I recalled. I gotta wash my hands. All right, so we mixed up the eggs in with the potatoes. And the next step, we're going to start adding flour to this. Um, you can also put a little salt and pepper, which I think I'd like to do. What do you think, Pat? Yeah. Are you filming right now? What? Are you filming it right now? Yeah. Oh, you can. Yeah, you're supposed to. He's gonna edit it. Well, you're supposed to. So, um, so take me like. So you bake the potato or mash them? You can bake the potatoes. Okay. You, um, if you want to bake them, put them on some aluminum foil, salt them after you wash them, and then wrap them up and put them in the oven at like 375, and let them bake for about 45 minutes to an hour till they're tender. Then you peel them, and then you mash them. You can boil them. We boiled them with the skin on, and they were easy to peel. Okay. I soak. I put a little. They're making. They're moister. Yucky. If yeah. you boil them. If you boil them, okay. So we mix the eggs in with the now potatoes. We, have to add the flour. we add a little salt and pepper, and now we're going to add the flour. And right. Pat, since you've done this before, I'm going to have you do that because it's a process. Because you just want to add a little bit at a time because you want to turn it into a dough. Mm -hmm. And eventually we'll take it out of the bowl and we'll, we'll knead it on the countertop. This could take some time because like Lisa said, you want to get this into a dough. Give it a nice little round piece of dough. Mm -hmm. So they had several ways of making the gnocchi look pretty. They had this, um, they had like a cutting board with slats on it, and you rolled the, the gnocchi down the board and it right, kind of yeah. made them long. Or you can just cut them and indent them with your finger, and that's what we're going to do today. Because it's it seemed to take a little bit more skill to roll it. You can actually roll it down the fork yes. too. Yes, I know. That what we generally did. The reason why you try to get the grooves in the gnocchi so that the gravy can get in the gnocchi and it, it, it uh, tastes much, much better. I'll show you what we ended up doing. I can never do it on a fork, I'm sorry. We just usually use our hands. That's what you did, right? Sue, your um, hand. I tried to do it on the fork too and they didn't come out very good. It's, it's got to get it just yeah, right. It's ju I guess it's just a skill that you learn yeah. over time. So most people have these ingredients in their kitchen. They have potatoes on hand, right. you have flour, you have eggs, and okay. if you have time and you want to make something special for the kids some night, mm -hmm. or for your husband. How are you going to know when it's done though? You know, because you get the feel of it. It's, like yeah. a, it's like, almost like a bread dough, or like a pizza dough. The texture is very doughy. You don't have a board, huh? No, but we can put it right on the yeah. countertop. It's fine. It's clean. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you put it on the board? Got to shake yep. your rings off. Yeah, we got to shake your rings off. Of it's very messy. Well, it's not ready. It's not just ready. Yet. Oh, it's not. Because we're. It's gonna. You gotta need Here, it. Here's where the hands come in. Okay. Now, can you do this in the KitchenAid with the dough? Book? I never tried it. Mm, I didn't either. Oh. You can feel the moisture in your hand. That's what we've got to do. <laughs> yep, and you just keep adding flour and kneading it. And you don't, it's, it's almost like a, um, I can't explain it. 
You just know when it's done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because overneeding is going to make them tough. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you do it enough, see it's still moist, yeah. still not a dough. And I did wash my hands. How many potatoes did you use? And the count is clean. We used too. about four. <laughs> so if you four have potatoes. two large potatoes, that's enough. Or four smaller ones, mm -hmm. four or five. Mm -hmm. It's getting there. That's my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't Little put it on. With it. Uh, Don't you hate when somebody calls when your hands are all dirty? When you're making yakis. <laughs> How many times have you looked at the phone when your hands were messy and it's like, oh, I gotta take that call, and then you end up with sauce all over your phone? In your hand. Got the true in mind. Boy, Pat, when I did it, it was much messier. You're, no, you're much you like a prank. He, he does so, is, so much more graceful than I did. This is a tough job. The, the needing. Is it? It's still more. See my hands? Yeah. yeah. So you're trying to get it so it's not sticking like, to your like hands. Yeah. Like, like a, a bread dough. dough. Hmm. Oh, so when, you, when it doesn't stick to your fingers, I guess that's right. kind of when you know. Okay. Yeah. It's done when it's not sticking to your hands that much. It almost looks like a, um, a bread dough. And then we, we're putting it like this because we're going to do it's cut it into pieces. I'm gonna roll it out. I'm supposed to be doing it on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looks looks better than that. Those look beautiful, Pat. Gonna roll it out. Yeah. You don't want them too thick too because thin. we used to call them belly bombers. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Now we're gonna cut them. Okay, now here's where there are the three different ways to do it. You could do it on a fork. I'm going to see if I could try. I could never do it. But they usually put the gnocchi on the fork like this and go like this. See? It goes right through to me. Can't do that. What I do is I do this. Put a little groove in them. And we put them on a towel separately so that they don't stick together because otherwise they would stick together. And this this is the tedious job. This is where This is where mother, you get your kids to help you. That's right. After my mother passed away, we lived in a three family house, my sister upstairs, my dad downstairs, and he used to come down on a Saturday and say Come on down, we're making yucky. And there'd be five of us. Oh, and wow. he'd do all the work and we'd end up doing all this. There'd be four of us doing this. So why would you do that step instead of just leave them the way they are? Because it makes them a little thinner. And like I said, the gravy will get in that groove and make them taste 100% better. This way it'll just be like a real belly bomber. This also makes them cook more tender with the groove in there because, see the hole? Hold on, hold on, show, show me that hole again. Oh, put it, after you do this one, show me the hole. Just hold it up as soon as you do it. When you, if, if you just put this in the water, it would be kind of like what I call a belly bomber. When you do this, you got a groove there and the water and the gravy gets in there and makes it a much more tender pasta. Oh, gotcha. It's like a roll. Exactly. So roll this is considered there. pasta, right, Pat? I consider it pasta. Mm -hmm. I always kid around and call it ganaki. 
Ganaki. Ganaki. <laughs> That's how I grew up learning it, was Ganaki. Do you want to do some food? Got to wash your hands. So have you made these before, Sue? I'm sorry? Have you made gnocchis before? No. You haven't? So you're learning too. I only watched. Well, her mother used to make it, right, Sue? But yes, her mother used to take the thumb tap to go this way. Oh, with the thumb? There'd be more of a groove in the center. Interesting. But that's a long time ago. That's too big. I'm crushing it. <laughs> yeah, I see that. It's not bad. No. The okay. Yeah. Like that. The tips. That's good. Good. Is that all right? Yep. That's great. You can use a little flour on your tips if you want. That's good. That's good. Once they're made back? Sure. So would you boil them first and freeze them? Or no, would you just freeze them. You could do either way. Either way. Okay. In fact, personally, I look at these when they're left over. Like at night. Right. The night that you made them, after dinner, or the next day. Because they're you know, laying in the gravy and it's really sopping them up. Right. There's a lot of, everybody at Sweet is own really. But I would think once you've made the dough and you're making, you're in that process of making them, I would want to make like a, another one just so I can throw it in the freezer. Exactly. You could either freeze the dough or the, uh, the yucky, right. whatever you want. I think I would freeze the gnocchi only because I wouldn't want to have to wait for the dough to thaw right. out. Yeah, and you already got the mess already out there. Exactly. That's right. Make them. Yeah. I'm in the mold. Yep. Double it's a lot of work. Oh, it is. But it's fun. It's worth it. I would suggest you do this in the evening on a Saturday with a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, we used to do it every Sunday. You can edit that out if you like. We used to have our uh, main meal on Sundays. In the afternoon. Oh, so you make them on Saturday? We'd make them Sunday morning, oh, Sunday right after church. <laughs> I'm going to make them Saturday night with a bottle of wine. Pat's going to make them Sunday morning after right, everybody church. Everybody will have yucky. You might eat yucky by Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mona. Mm -hmm. We know where to get them. Yeah. Sunday. All right, Pat, so I think we're ready to put them in the Let's boiling go. water. So we're just going to plop them in, right? And you see the way they sink? Yep. They sink to the bottom. So there's no timing this, there's, you got to watch it, right? Yep, you just got to watch it, right, Pat? Yes, there's basically no time. You, it's one of those things you just get yes. to know. If you put it all together, they go, right, that's yeah, good. I realize that, but I can't see Whoops, what was that? <laughs> it's it sucks. We won't show that. I never do is I never put oil in my water. Okay. Oil tends to coat a pasta and then the gravy just slips off it. Oh, all right. It doesn't soak into the pasta. Oh, that's it, good it's know. everybody to each his own. That's the way we will learn to cook. They're coming to the top now. So Pat, when they float to the top, do you plate them immediately? Yeah, you could plate them immediately, or if you're cooking for a large uh, a company, you could put them in a big dish and put a lot of gravy on it and, and you know, mix it up to make sure they don't stick. But let's just plate these. Okay. I put a little gravy at the bottom of the dish, and then we just scoop them out, put them in. You notice? They're not sticking to each other, which means they're done. The portion, 
depends on who you're feeding. Because we got a lot of batches. I'm going to make this what we had put in. So if you don't want to have them with a the sauce, you can saute them in butter and garnish them with a oh, little yes. Parmesan cheese. We'll show that. We'll show that. Oh, we have, oh, we have more, right. Okay. And a little more gravy. All right, so another way to make the gnocchis is when they're, when they're finished boiling, you can take them straight from the boiling water and drain a little bit and saute them in about a tablespoon of butter. And this is if you don't want to put them in a sauce, a red sauce or a cream sauce, and you just want the gnocchis. And they're really delicious this way too. How long do you cook it, Lisa? Are we looking for browning or what? Yes, you just want to brown them on both sides. Uh -huh. And when they're brown on both sides, then, then they're done. Then they're done. Looks good. So kind of on a, a medium to high heat. All right. Because you want them to cook kind of fast. What kind of and seasoning would you add to it? Um, for seasoning, you can put a little salt and pepper, some fresh parsley, um, some grated cheese. Mm -hmm. You could also put fresh chives on uh, them. Yep. Any, any type of Italian. Oregano. Oregano. Just turning it up a little higher because I want it to be crispy. Pat, what else would you serve with gnocchi? Well, when we used to, excuse me, when we used to make the gnocchi, we used to make a big pot of gravy and then the gravy and, and a big salad. And in the pot of a gravy or sauce, if you will, we used to put meatballs, pork, uh, spare ribs, a eye of chuck, all meat, so that we would really just have the uh, gnocchi, the salad, and a great loaf of Italian bread. And it was more than enough. And we usually never had one third. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting that. Yep, they're almost done. They smell delicious. They do. Oh my god, they smell so good. Well, butter, butter, butter. Yep. Anything you cook in butter smells yeah. good, right? I think you can cook these in olive oil too if you want a healthier choice. What would be good too is we also cook uh, macaroni al yorga, which is basically mm -hmm. olive oil, garlic, and parsley. That would be very good too. That sounds delicious. I mean, you could also I'm make this with uh, uh, a meat based. Um, gravy you can make with a marinara, or you can make with a bolognese. That, that would, I never had it with a bolognese because it always had our meat separate. Mm -hmm. But imagine that with a bunch of crushed uh, beef and pork and everything, yeah. sausage would be great. That sounds delicious. Yeah. I'm getting hungry. I know. So you want them to be nice and brown like this. We're going to put them in our bowl here and plate them. And you can add a little salt. A little pepper and some Parmesan cheese. I put parsley on them, but I don't have any right now, and they're ready to eat. Okay. Service. Put a little cheese on it. Always with the hands. <laughs> try. Which one do which you want to try? Right. Do you want to try some, Sue? Not at the moment. Not at the moment. Laura. I'm just watching. Okay. I'll try it. Manja, manja. Do you want to try some, Mike? You've been saving your carbs all week so you can have this, right? That's right. Really good. Oh, I wow. have a bite of yours. Mmm. I mean, it's a Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. Try it this way. Really good. Try this one, Mike. That is the right yeah. texture. Oh, my God. So, so, Pat, we made way too much gnocchi. How are we going to save the rest that we haven't cooked? Well, we have this piece over here that's left over. So what I would do is you know, put, it around, put a little flour on it. It needs to dry out. So you can either put it in a plastic bag, you can put it in saran wrap, you can put it in the freezer, and it'll stay there for months. Months? Months. Wow. And what about the little pieces? What about the little pieces? Well, the these are harder because if you put them in a bag or saran wrap, they're going to stick together. 
what you could do, I'm not trying it though, but it should work, it's a pasta, is cook them and then freeze them. That's probably what I would say. And then when you take them out, they wouldn't stick together, and you can reheat them. I never tried that though. Of course, in my house, yuppies were never left over. <laughs> <laughs> so if that dries out, right, when you freeze it, so you don't have to um, dry them out again, right? Because it's already No, dry. you probably have to knead a little more, more with okay. maybe a little more flour. Depends. Remember, it's always the texture. Yeah. But these turned out very good. They did. So thanks for joining us this week on The Golden Pan. Thank you, Pat, for You're joining welcome. me and showing me how to make gnocchis the good old-fashioned Italian way. We'll see you next time. Um, coming up, we'll be doing some baking, some other main dishes. So we'll see you next time. Just a minute, folks. It's Diving Driving time, and we got a great Western for you today. Diving Driving is a new program featuring the H Cam staff's favorite B movies. We hope you enjoy these treasured films of yesteryear. Even if we don't get paid, there ain't no job we train. We're hard and great, and take the thing. So check out the H Cam TV website at hcam.tv for movie days and showtimes. Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. A very special dessert done by a woman from Hopkinton that yes. I've started using regularly. We had your residents participating both as vendors and as shoppers, yeah. and that oh, was, that was so, so much fun. fun. Uh, real Hopkinton Housewives, if you're on Facebook, you will have a blast. Thanks for joining Cheers, us. Cheers, guys. It's been a great Thank you. Yeah, good to see you see too. Bye-bye.